Hi everyone, welcome to Electronics with Professor Mughal. A couple of announcements today and then we'll start out with today's video. Number one, in the last 28 days or so, I have got over 1000 hours of watch time on my YouTube channel. 96% of that came from those who have not even subscribed to my YouTube channel. That is unfair to me. If you are watching it and if you are benefiting from it, I expect you guys to subscribe to the channel and I kind of uh, uh, get really disappointed to be honest and the reason I say that is because you know when I see those people making stupid dance videos and getting million views it really disappoints me because this is high quality education this is high quality stuff that I'm teaching you on FPGA projects I promise you you won't find something like this on any YouTube channel and I promise you I'm giving you with step-by-step -step instructions, providing you with the project files and everything. So I really deserve a little bit of, you know, appreciation and support. And one way you can do that is by subscribing to the channel. So if you haven't already, you know, just hit that subscribe button right now. I really need your support. Thank you. So second thing I wanted to talk to you about was most of my uh, projects on my FPGA playlist uh, they are extension of one another it means you know I would make something and then I would build upon it and extend uh, you know the scope of it and make something with it, come up with a new project and that's what I hope from you as well I really want you not just use my uh, way of doing things but actually explore them add more features and make something big out of it and if you share it with me I'll be more than happy and I'll acknowledge it and I'll share it on my platform as well that hey you know you would make me really feel proud if you would make something and I can share it on my platform hey you know this person benefited from my videos and was able to achieve something of this nature so it is very important folks when I am therefore making a video and I'm referring to any of my video from the past it is really important that you watch those videos and I'm not just saying it for the sake of having some watch time I really mean it in a way because in order for you to understand that video that project you need to have the basic knowledge uh, which is needed prior to watching that video and there's a lot of stuff which is repetitive so if I keep on talking about that stuff in every video those videos are going to last you know more than an hour so this is important that when I'm referring to a video you should watch them prior to watching that video and this is important again because today's project is an extension of my last two FPGA projects video that I have published how to scroll a message or numbers on seven segment display board uh, on your FPGA board right uh, and it's very very important part of any project uh, especially when it comes to having something to scroll over uh, the display be it some characters letters uh, or whatever now all of you have been to restaurants or stores or gas station and you see this restaurant sign and uh, says open or close or outside Walmart say says open and close that's what exactly we are going to create today the only input to this project is going to be that push button not exactly push button but it's actually gonna be switch uh, where you you know flip the switch on and off to display either open or close at a time I'll leave the link of the two of my last videos uh, below in the description box also I'll have those thumbnails on the screen as well so it's very important that you should at least watch how to scroll messages on a seven segment display before you watch this one because like I said this video is an extension of that project we're gonna start off looking at the function block diagram uh, before that we will also have a look at the demo and then following the uh, block diagram we will move on to the coding part and I'll try to go through as much detail as I can so without wasting much time let's get started so as soon as the code is implemented the board is going to display open sign just like you, you would walk in when the restaurant is open and you see this open sign the open sign is going to rotate to the left every one second the character is going to move to the left so uh, right now it is there's only one input to this code uh, to this project which is this button right here which is a switch and right now it is set to zero so it is displaying open but when I switch it to one position 
it will display close and again the character is going to move to the left rotate to the left every one second basically displaying close and in this video i'm just doing open and close but technically you should have enough knowledge by the end of this lecture in fact my last three videos i'm going to leave the link in the description that you can watch those videos and basically scroll any message or number you would like it could be as long as saying a welcome message you know a bunch of characters i wanted to keep it small but uh, like i said you know this could be a menu you know different kind of burgers um drinks uh, you know other stuff let's now look at the functional block diagram for this project so we're trying to display two words basically uh, either it will display close or it will display open as you see and I, as i was showing you in the demo it scrolls to the left rotate to the left and keep on you know rotating uh, getting stuck in a loop for infinite number of times and the character just moves to the left every one second so let's see like, how close is gonna look like obviously on basis 3 board that I'm using only has four seven segment display so at the time it can at one time it can only display four letters or characters so I'm going to create a variable uh, which I'm gonna name scroll close and scroll open okay uh, and notice over here when I run my code it's going to display C L O S uh, and then after one second this L is gonna move over here this O is gonna move over here S is gonna move over here and E comes in as a new letter right and similarly is just keep on rotating uh, to the left and so the sequence will look something like this when you go to number five uh, sequence that's when it displays C L O S means it can go back to one because that's how initially when we got started it was displaying C L O S so therefore we would need a uh, three bit uh, scroll variable over here when we're trying to display open same thing you know it starts with the displaying open and then the character will move to the left rotate left every one second so next next cycle it will show P E N O uh, so O basically goes over here and everything rotate to the left scrolls to the left every one second once it reaches the scroll count reaches four that means it is displaying open now it can go back to scroll number one where it's basically gets stuck in this loop and they'll keep on as you can see in the demo here at the bottom right corner of the screen as well notice over here there's only one input to this uh, this project which is going to be a rightmost switch on my basis three board which is going to uh, depending upon how it is flipped over it is going to display close and open when it's zero it's basically displays one when the switch is one it basically displays uh, close okay so open and close we got two uh, clocks one is the one hertz clock this is for scrolling the letters to the left and the uh, 100 hertz clock is to toggle the seven segment display so this is on the other three are off and then after this because this is 100 hertz that makes a 10 milliseconds so 10 milliseconds this is on then 10 milliseconds this is on the other three are going to be off and then 10 milliseconds this one is on the other three are off and then 10 milliseconds this is on the other three off and it's working as a decoder basically so it's making sure one is on the other one and it's happening it's happening at a frequency 100 hertz which is not uh, you know recognizable by human eye human eye would not think that this is going on and off this is basically a toggling process in fact this is a way to trick our eyes because it will be solid all the time just like you see at the bottom right corner of the screen we don't see that the uh, segments going on and off if they are it's happening so fast that human eye cannot detect that the two clocks are wired up with the restaurant signage module which is also a top module in conjunction with the bcd7 segment so this uh if you look at it we need to have a c character l o s e and then p 
n n so we need at least with three four five six seven characters different and that's what the bcd7 module goes uh, is doing and then output is just a seven segment display four enablers for the four segments and then seven segment itself so the block diagram is fairly simple it's very really important to have a good knowledge of the block diagram because like i always say it's half the battle won let's move on to the coding part now so like I was showing you during the block diagram that there are a total of four modules uh, and they are labeled such as BCD 7 segments, slow clock which is 1 hertz, slow clock which is going to be 100 hertz so there's two clock and then restaurant sign this is our top module. We're going to start off with the BCD 7 segment module pretty simple you know four bit input and then uh, display which is going to be the output declared as a register because we want these seven segment to hold on to these characters okay uh, always add statement here and then starting off with the case statement we're gonna have a bunch of case statement and seven of those one each for each letter if you want to display O then we want all our segments segment A segment B C D E F all on G which is the last segment is going to be off and hence the logic is set to 1. Remember this is active low logic right active low logic so this means 0 is going to be on and 1 is going to be off. Similarly if you look at 1 is assigned to P if you want to display P on 7 segment then segment A and B are going to be on and then E, F, G are going to be on. Similarly for E, everything is going to be on except for B and C. So I have basically covered everything O, P, E, N for open. C, L, and S, O, and E are already covered over here. Now, the good thing about it is because I only have seven characters here but say if you are displaying a large message welcome message or a menu or something you are probably gonna need it everything from A to Z and you can display A to Z uh, so it will go from 0 to 26 and then you know whichever way you want to display for example N I there's not a good way for me to display N in uppercase so I'm going with the lowercase N and this is how and you already saw it on the during the demo how n looked like it looked in a lower case so if you are trying to replicate this project and try trying to display something else other than close and open make sure you got all your characters all your letters everything is covered over here be it number as well everything is covered over here since i have seven letters I got 0 to 6 and then following it up by n case n and then n module so this was pretty simple basic stuff clock 1 Hertz slow clock and 100 Hertz are pretty similar the only difference is that of the the counter value so let's look at the 1 Hertz clock which is basically one second clock your input is your FPGA board clock which is 100 megahertz I, I have a basis 3 board so uh, make sure whatever you have uh, what, whatever kind of a board you have make sure what is the uh, frequency on your board so that counter value may change accordingly minus 100 megahertz so my calculation is according to that I have created a variable over here basically it's a register this in this register I am going to count up to a certain number and that means when that this value which is initially set to 0 reaches that certain number that means half a second has elapsed okay uh, so how do I get that number if you look at line number 29 I'm saying always at positive edge of the clock this is the board clock whenever the clock arrives it's the I have an if and else statement over here it should look whether the count is 49999999 or not if that is not the case then the count should go up by one and clock should stay zero so half a pulse is zero half of other half is one one clock cycle is comprised of half zero half being one 
So, and how did I get this 0 to 49, triple nine, triple nine? Is remember I have a 100 megahertz clock. If I need to convert that into one hertz, then hertz and hertz will cancel out. Basically, we will have 100 million clock cycles. And because 100 million clock cycles, half of them are zero and half of them are one. So if I divide this number by two, so 100 million divided by two is going to give me five, uh, 50 million and zero to 49 triple nine triple nine makes 50 million cycles that's how i got this number right here if the period uh has reached period count register value has reached 49 triple nine triple nine million that means it should reset itself back to zero and start counting again and while it's counting again back to 49 triple nine triple nine clock should stay one so for half a second it's zero and for half a second it's one total combined they make a clock cycle which is one second equivalent to one hertz okay this number right here 28 the reason it's 28 is because remember we are counting up to 49 triple nine triple nine so if you take two to the power 28 two to the power 28 should give you a number which should equal this maximum value right here. So I think 27 would also work, but uh, I just went with whatever I had from the previous file. Let's see what would change if you're going to go from one hertz to 100 hertz. Again, the only thing that changes is this value right here and this value right here. Now we are counting up to 49 four nine nine triple nine and again how we came up with this number let's look at it 100 megahertz clock uh, on a basis three board and again you know if this clock is 50 megahertz for you then you need to change this value to 50 megahertz mine is 100 megahertz so I'm gonna keep it 100 megahertz I'm going from 100 megahertz to 100 Hertz so Hertz and Hertz will cancel out and 100 million divided by 100 so 100 and 100 will cancel out I'll only get hundred uh, you know one million clock cycles basically one million clock cycles here let me one million clock cycles here and as you know half of those clock cycles are going to be zero half of the clock cycle is going to be one so if I take a half of one million clock cycle divide this by two I basically get five hundred thousand so I can count from zero to four double nine triple nine because this will make five hundred thousand right so if the period count which is initially set to zero and again this number right here to the power 21 right now because zero to 20 21 to the power 21 should exceed this number four double nine triple nine okay if that's not the case it's not going to give you the right result so if the period count has not reached this value right here then period should go up by one and the clock should stay zero but if that's not the case period count has reached this maximum value then it should reset itself to zero and start counting back again while it's doing that the count clock should get one so what's happening half of the time it's zero and half of the time it's one together they make one clock cycle which is equivalent to 100 hertz actually in time it's 10 milliseconds okay so pretty simple code I've done it many times before as well now let's move on to the core part of the project so this is the top module I have labeled this as restaurant underscore signage uh, the input is the clock the FPGA clock there's one switch right here to display open or close when it's zero, it's going to display open. When it's one, it's going to display close. We got the seven segment here, and also we got the output. The reason it's got four bits, because it, we got four displays on the basic three board, so to enable all four of them all at once. The slow clock one hertz highlighted uh, here is uh, declared as a wire, and also the 100 hertz clock as well. These are the two variables that I was talking about, which will be declared as registers. Scroll open, scroll close. Again, this thing is
Then I line number 36, I have another register, fourth, third, second, first. Those are again uh, declared as registered and four bit because on a four segments, this fourth represents what is going to be displayed on the seventh segment, which is on the on the left uh, most of the uh, the board. And this first represents what is going to be displayed on the rightmost segment on the board. And the two middle ones are will be uh, labeled as third and second. And there's another register here. This is for what needs to be displayed. If it, if you know, if zero needs to be displayed, then we know uh, D is going to be zero. And if that's the case, if Y is zero, then it should display O basically, right? Similarly, so this is what's going on over here. Uh, declared all our IO ports, wires, and registers. We are instantiating all the two clocks that we have over here. So you have to make sure the way I have labeled them over here, they need to be labeled exactly the same over here as well. And similarly, the way I have labeled them over here, they need to be labeled the same over here. If you don't do it, then it's going to return you an error. Remember, Verilog is a case sensitive language. Okay, this part of the code, what is this doing over here? Scrolling the letters on the basis three board. Whenever the positive edge of the slow clock, this is the one hertz clock, whenever one second clock arrive, if the switch is set to zero, then it is supposed to display open, right? It is supposed to display open. So scroll open will actually increment by one initially it's set to zero remember initially both open and close are set to zero it should go up by one when the scroll open equals to four it should go back to one why because that's how it gets stuck in a loop and it just keep on displaying open so scrolling to the left on the seven segment display if the switch is set to one, that means now we need to display close. So scroll close should go up by one. And again, if scroll close reaches a count value of five, then it should go to one. And again, what is the reason? Because we want it to get stuck in a loop and it just keep on displaying close on the seven segment display. I have the graphics on the right and you can see that, you know, uh, when it reaches five, it should go to one because it will that way get stuck in a loop. This part of the code is basically responsible for displaying the uh, open and closed messages. And we want them, like I said, you know, the characters to rotate or left, move to the left every one second. So again, we are looking at a one hertz clock. If the switch is zero, then when the scroll count is zero, it should display open so I got O P E N again fourth is the leftmost segment first is the rightmost segment and the middle ones are third and second so it's displaying open over here and if you're wondering how did I get the zero one two and three over here well remember zero is O zero is O one is P two is E and N is three so I got them zero one two three zero one two three similarly when the scroll count goes up by one what do we need to well these letters these characters need to shift to the left so p comes here e comes here and n comes over here and then o is gonna move over here and that's how i have it over here right similarly you know make sure you do this arrangement just like i'm showing you on the graphics right now if switch is one, if switch is one, that means we need to display close now. At scroll close, which is initially set to zero, it should display C L O S, right? And then L should in the in the next pulse arrive uh, one second. Uh, then scroll count should go up by one, and if that's the case, L should be displayed on the fourth, and first should be displayed on the first. Uh, segment it should display E and notice over here everything has shift to the left everything has shift to the left it will keep on shifting to the left and once you know it reaches five that means 
uh, it is go it's it is going to go back to one over here because that's how we had set the logic right to get it stuck in a loop if I go up over here when the scroll message is uh, scroll underscore close equals to five it gets to one and that's way that way it basically gets stuck in a loop displaying close so pretty simple stuff over here now this is the important part right here this part of the code is basically responsible for count register we have a count register we initially set to zero which is going to act as a decoder and toggle the four segments okay remember 10 milliseconds one segment is going to be on the other three going to be off right so there we have a 10 milliseconds 100 hertz clock count is initially set to zero there are only four seven segment displays so this therefore the bit size is two so initially zero then when the clock arrives it should go up by one once it reaches three it should reset itself to zero and start counting back again right now we're gonna do a bunch of case statements if the counter is zero if that is the case then the the rightmost segment needs to be on so d is going to be first and enable is going to be this zero here represents the rightmost segment is going to be on the other three are going to be on, off remember it is active low so one is off and the zero is on and the reason it's four bit is because we have four bits on four seven segment display on basis three board if you have five you're gonna have to make that change accordingly next counter goes up by one if the counter is one then the seven the second display on the board d equals to second and that should be on so zero over here represents that the seven second display is going to be on if the count is two that means the third segment from the right is going to be on and lastly if the count is three then d equals to fourth which means the leftmost seven segment is going to be on right d is this is what is going to be displayed on that particular segment and that particular segment being on that's what this zero represents so zero means on here basically left most segment is going to be on and this is going to display whatever is supposed to be on the uh, fourth segment from the right uh, and fourth remember what is fourth well fourth was already declared as a register and depending upon the scroll count it is going to rip, uh, you know display certain letters and characters right and then finally you know I am instantiating my BCD7 segment uh, module over here this is the identifier name make sure these na labels are the way they appear over here well that, whichever way you you know declare them over here you will see these will change accordingly but they cannot be same so make sure you got different um, identifier names and then follow it up by in the parenthesis we have D comma segment D is going to be the register declared input and then segment is going to be the output and again if you follow over here you're following the sequence inputs were declared first and then the output so input then output similarly over here we have when you are instantiating we have inputs first which is D and then the output segment followed by and module uh, so I'm gonna save everything if you look at the constant file the constant file is pretty you know simple we got the basis 3 clock board clock we got the switch to flip between you know open and close the seven segment over here and then the four enablers and if you want to you can make a little bit of changes and uh, if you do that uh, you your constant file may change I'm going to run implementation over here and then hopefully it is going to be successful it might take a couple of minutes and if that happens we're gonna generate a bitstream file and once the bitstream file is created we are going to implement the code onto the basis 
board. So stay here with me. Awesome. Implementation is complete. Let's generate the bitstream file. Bitstream is complete. Make sure you plug in your FPGA board to your machine. Once you do that, it should have been detected. Click on open target. Click auto connect. Yay, it was detected. So I'm going to program my device. Click here and then click on program. And then hopefully you should see the implementation on your board. And like I said, you know, I didn't go through every bit of detail like how to create a project or how to upload, uh, you know, the later part. Well, I showed you how to upload the bitstream file. But if you want to really want to lo learn about that part, there is a video I will leave in the description which is going to. Uh, show you from the scratch how to create a project and how to select your target that is your FPGA on your board. I hope you enjoyed watching this tutorial folks this was a very simplest of uh, application but you can change it modify it and make it something uh, bigger. I wanted to keep it small um, displaying only open and closed but think of like if you want to display you know many items like sauces or Rings or burgers and what kinds and not. There, there could be so much be done to this project. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the description. I'll be more than happy to help you guys. I really want you to succeed in your life. And if this was beneficial to you, please subscribe to the channel. Enjoy your rest of the day and stay safe. Bye.